I'm different than Adam Schefter, and we're both different than Stephen A. Mm -hmm. But we're all in the media. Yeah, it's it it can get conflated a lot, you know. Um, exactly. It, it definitely in like just news reporting, but if we just keep it to sports, it's like I'm on the ground. I'm at practice every day, talk mm -hmm. to the players, agents, coaches. Like I'm, like in the building. Then yeah. there's people like Adam who report from a studio, do their job. Doesn't really give his opinion. Just says, hey, this transaction mm -hmm. happened, this trade happened, mm -hmm. this team's thinking this. Okay, that's that's one part of it. Mm -hmm. And then Stephen A might get on there and just talk his shit. Yeah. Totally, that's three different roles. Yeah, yeah. like I'm yeah. with one team most of the time. Adam covers the whole league. Stephen A covers all the sports. Yeah, and we could all be talking about Russell Wilson on yeah. a given day or on a given podcast, but it's different. We have different roles, different information, different kind of obligations and relationships to like protect. Yeah. Yo, what up, what up? It's your boy Rabino. And this DJ Erm in the building. And you listening to the Up and Up podcast. Yeah. Wait, what are we doing? I don't know. Just listen. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What it do, what it do. Ladies and gentlemen, you're tuning to the Up and Up podcast on the Up and Up Network. I'm your host, Rubino. And I'm DJ Earn, man. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good, bro. Good? Yeah. Feeling great? Feeling great. Feeling Refreshed? Good. Yep. Rejuvenated? Yep. How was the weekend? It was good. It was good. Eventful? You know, eventful. <laughs> Shout out Robel and Beelin. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah just man. got engaged, so. Shout out Black Shout Love, out man. Him, for for sure, for sure, yeah. man. Um, I'm feeling good, too, man. Thanks for asking, bro. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling great. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yep. Blessed. <laughs> sure, that's it. <laughs> nah, man, I'm, 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 I'm glad to be here, man. For real, definitely. Um, and if this is your first time tuning in, as I stated, this is the Up and Up podcast. Uh, this is the podcast where we're focused on cultivating culture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We do that by providing amazing stories of individuals, groups, right? Movements, right? Yes, sir. Um, people who are really taking up space, man, right? And and, and carving lanes, um, not only for themselves and those still here in this very moment, but those coming from behind, right? The mm -hmm. next generation. Um, you know we got to shout out the family members, of course, right? Definitely on the to-do list, yes, right? Um, all of the supporters, viewers, listeners, um, anybody who's really just been rocking with us, man, supporting and tapping in, not just with the podcast, but the up and up movement as a whole. Salute to you guys. We appreciate you. We love you. And I'm going to give a mood, you know? Are you yes, going to give a mood? Oh, yeah. You know Always. What I mean? Always. Let's, let's do bro. it. Let's do it. So for this episode, I'm gonna, I'm really in a gratuitous mood right mm -hmm. now. Um, so for this episode, we're actually going to do a merch giveaway to a lucky listener or viewer. Um, and for... The way, to, the way in which you can win the giveaway is if you can let us know at the end of this episode, after listening to it or watching it, let us know what some of your biggest takeaways were from this episode. And you can go ahead and send us um, those takeaways at our DM on, on our Instagram at underscore the up and up. And let us know, man. And we'll, yeah. you know, we'll pick a lucky winner and we'll, and we'll get you right. Right. Yep. Yep. Show. Sure, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'm feeling good, man. But, um, you know, let's. I, I, I definitely want to make sure we we um, we set the tone right. Okay, so in terms of first time listeners, um, you know, we really pride ourselves on bringing um, people on this show who really really embody what it means to be represent representation, right? Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of different industries, um, and one in particular that we're excited about today is is really the media space. Um, and today's guest, I would say is someone who, who's truly, um, in the lane of his own, but is using his, his lane to amplify, um, the stories and voices of a lot, right. in the masses and, and others, um, he's definitely a true cultural cultivator who's keeping everything he's doing on the up and up, right. Um, young, hungry, right. I, I would say definitely an important voice in the sports media and journalism space, especially here in the Seattle sports scene. Um, he's only, he's only on the rise, right. Um, to give you a little insight on the work this brother's been doing, he's a staff writer and contributor for The Athletic, um, as well as creator and co-host of the very popular Seahawks Man to Man podcast, right? Um, and not to mention as well as that, on top of that, he's also co-host of recently launched radio show The Hype with Chris and Mike, which you can listen to on Saturdays um, on 93.3 KJR Sports, right? What time is that at? 9 to 11. 9 to 11. Okay, I want to get that, <laughs> make sure I get that right. Um and, and circling back to his contributions in terms of journalism and writing, um, I definitely want to I want to shout him out because um, due to his excellent work and this brother's been grinding for some time now, he actually recently was announced 
um, as the winner of the National Sports Media Association, otherwise known as the NSMA, 2021 Best Reporter Under 30 Award, right? Yes, Major, sir. man. And, mm-hmm. you know, that that's not an easy thing to accomplish, right? You got to put in some time and grind for that. Um, and overall, man, he's just a brother who's taking up space. And like I said, breaking barriers in the world of journalism and media. And he's only getting started. We're super honored. We're excited to have him here with us today. Our guest is none other than the one and only Michael Sean Dugar. Can we get a round of applause? Come on. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. How you doing, boss? I'm doing good. I'm proud of you guys, too, man. I'm I remember pr- being at the launch party. Yeah. Right yeah. Up and up. Wow. I remember downtown uh, somewhere. I can't remember where. It but was uh, Pioneer Square. Yeah, yeah, on like yeah. first or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. like right by uh, stage. Yeah, right by stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm happy for you guys. I'm, I'm wearing the shirt. Yes, sir. I bought man. the shirt from uh, from Erm. I was like, yeah. well, you know, whenever you need me, hit that, yeah. you know? I got top. you. Top. Nah, top, man. man. It's, it's a pleasure to have you here, man. And I should have mentioned he's also a Washington State Cougar. That's, That's what right. I'm saying. That's man. right. You know, That's I thought right. I'd throw that out there too. Eight man. years ago, I graduated. Damn. Yeah. Damn, we, we yeah. That, that best yeah, reporter we, under thirty. They got me soon. I turned thirty next <laughs> like two months. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy, man. Time flies, though. You know, yeah. time flies when when you're doing what you love, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I doesn't. It doesn't feel like I work. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's fun. Mm. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. You know, the journalism thing is fun. Yeah. It can be if you do it right. No, for sure, definitely. You're definitely doing it right. Um, mm-hmm. and, and again, we're honored to have you here. And uh, to start this show, I don't know if you're familiar with the show, but we always start the show with a quote of the day, right? To kind of get the vibe right, get the conversation started. Um, I don't know if y'all know, they don't let me tell quotes up here. So, brother, yeah. brother, yeah, yeah, man, yeah I know. I think the they know man. now. He's I think the, they know now. <laughs> he's the quote, man. What you got for us today, man? Um, all right. So the quote of the day today is: "Success is never final. Failure, failure is never fatal. It's courage that counts." Mm. I like that. Yeah. Mm. Who's that from? Legendary coach John Wooden. Mm. Yeah. I like so, that. You know. He was very inspirational. Yeah. Like people who've encountered him really like feel they they took they took something away. Yeah. It's that's almost there's a lot of people in sports that I've like I, even if I haven't met them, it's like when somebody has met Kobe, someone has met uh Bill Russell. Yeah. Like that as yep. well. Ali. It's mm-hmm. like they don't even got to talk to you about sports. They just talk to you, and then you just like, oh damn, I learned something. Yeah, just exactly. On, on accident, yeah. a, a little bit. Like, what not? Maybe on an accident with John Wooden, but like Pete Carroll swears by John Wooden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's yep. how. There's so many people who do yeah, too, but he's, exactly. he's he's one of them dudes. Ali, Bill Russell, or some yeah. other ones mm-hmm. that come to mind. When I meet people who have met them, they're yeah. like, oh yeah, yeah, nah, nah, nah. I always remember Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. It's probably another one yep. as well. Yep. Really good author too. That's big, man. Yeah. I think yeah. that just that speaks to like you know you got to make your impression on people, mm-hmm. and you never know who you, who you might be meeting in the moment. For yeah, sure. I learned that in my business a lot. It's <laughs> yeah. like you meet so many people. There's so much networking. A lot of my job is networking. Mm-hmm. It's not just oh I go to the game, write about the game. Uh, but it's like I, it's agents, it's coaches. Mm-hmm. You just have to respect everybody, mm-hmm. not just because you're supposed to, like as a human, but you just really never know. You're doing you know, if I yeah. just, can I swear on here? Yeah, yeah. Man. yeah so I, if I just you know I shit on somebody, you know, s- some low level guy or some low level guys uh, or a low level agent's client or something like that or some low level coach, you just never know who's gonna be in a position of power, mm-hmm. and yeah. you know who they're not gonna talk to. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. is me. Yeah. You know, yeah. whose phone call they're not gonna respond yeah. to, whose text they're not gonna answer back because that's the main half the damn job is the 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 reporter part i got like two parts of my job yeah. the reporter part and the writer part the reporter part is getting people on the phone okay that's why people like adam Schefter and rap report are millionaires right because yeah. they can mm-hmm. get whoever they want on the phone yeah mm-hmm. you know they can get all the people i just named on the phone that yeah. ain't a lot <laughs> that's still alive you know, yeah. Kareem or whoever any gm yeah. any any owner you know that's the reporter part then the writer part is about like you mentioned telling the stories yes yes you yes. know actually amplifying you know people who need to be amplified and actively not amplifying people who are saying stupid shit. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, the, that's mm-hmm. the second part I've been taking pride on lately, especially on social media. Yeah. You know, not like ampli- even if it's just as simple as not quote tweeting some stupid shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and then making sure I quote tweet something that's actually valuable to the people. You know, 30,000 people follow me. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. If I'm going to throw something on their line, I yeah. want it to mean something. Yeah, I want know, it to be something exactly. wild. Yeah. You know, that we know. can all laugh at. Like we all disagree on it. So why even amplify it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I agree with that. No, that's good, man. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, too, because that was actually kind of the opening kind of um, question I, I was curious about, because I do feel like journalism um, in itself is an art form, right? And it's a craft. And I feel like, you know, nowadays we see people doing things, but you sometimes people don't see it as a craft. And for you, um, I would say, what? how would you say, um, or what best describes kind of the inspiration and motivation in terms of how you create your own approach and how you want to display your work? Because I feel like you're no... You're you're one of one in the world, right? And I think you should see yourself that way. But how do, how would you describe that? 
You know, I just try to, I try to make the subject relatable and humanize them, mm-hmm. you know, in the same way that I would want to be. I mm-hmm. think about that whenever I interview somebody. You know, I'm, interv- I'm working on a story right now about, um, I'm t- uh, about uh, Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. Not the the Laker, the, the the one the Seahawks just drafted, oh, yeah. the cornerback from yeah, Cincinnati, yeah. right? And I if, like I was talking to his dad the other day and his brother, and you know I just want to just I when I interview these guys now I just imagine like all right, so what if somebody interviewed me and they called my homie Marcus and they called my homie Tay and they called mm-hmm. my dad and they called my mom like how would I want to be represented? Not to say everything has to be a fluff piece, yeah, but it got to be accurate and you got to like humanize your subject because that's what you're here for. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not like a cops and courts reporter where I'm like writing on a guy going to, you know, on trial for murder. Like yeah. then you don't have to humanize him. Then yeah. you either did it or you didn't. Yeah. You know, that's that's yeah. it. Right. Yeah. But my job is to like, all right, Kobe Bryant drafted him, pick one Oh nine. Who is this guy? Yeah. And that's my job to do that with care and accuracy. Um, and that's really, and that's really important because everybody's going to see the game. Mm-hmm. And everybody's going to see whether he make tackles, make picks, whatever, whether it's an offensive player, uh, whatever. I just try to like, humanize them the way I would want to be. It's just yeah. basically the same thing my little, my daycare teacher used to say, you know, te- treat people the way you want to be treated. It's yeah. the same yeah. principle just applied to my job. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I, I, and I only started doing that recently, like the last like couple years, really mm-hmm. thinking like, man, if someone was to write about me, like how would I want to be mm-hmm. portrayed yeah. accurately? I don't have to be, you know, perfect. You know, yeah. nobody's perfect. It don't yeah, have to be exactly. no, like, that's really important because that's what people want. That's yeah. what the subject wants sometimes. Like, oh, I'll write this great thing about me because I'm great. Yeah. So well, I'll write this thing about you. You know, you mm. are, you are flawed for right or wrong. You know, you guys just had Doug up here. Yeah. He'll tell yeah. you all the time. Like yeah. his flaws almost, they, they don't define him, but they, they make him human. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's important. Yeah, mm-hmm. Honesty is important. Yeah. yeah uh, vulnerability, vulnerability, honesty, yep. all that. So like, I just try to make sure my job as a writer, this is different than as a reporter, because mm-hmm. as a reporter, you have some different obligations, you know, it just in terms of being the, the bridge of information yeah. Yeah. to the people. Hey, they drafted this person. They cut yeah. this person. This is why the team stinks. This is why the team's great. Mm-hmm. This is why they fired this person. That's why they hired this mm-hmm. person. Those are all just like kind of baseline reporter things, yeah. developing sources, you know, things like that. But like the art form part, you're really putting a pen to the, to the paper. There's a, um, it really is. It is an art form, and it is part of like humanizing a player. You know, mm. I did a, um, I had a job interview. Uh, I'm still with the Athletic, signed a new deal, mm. but, but I'd had, a, I, I, yeah, Congrats. thank you, thank yeah. you. I had a job interview because um, there was a competing offer for me when I was about to, you know, hit the market. Mm-hmm. And one of the one of the people who interviewed me at this other publication, they asked me about a story I written. It was about Brandon Browner. Mm-hmm. Like, but people may remember him. He was one of the ele- original Legion of Boom members. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. in prison right now. Uh, isn't eligible for parole until 2023. He uh, is in there for like trying to kill his baby mom or something like that. Uh, and th- I did a story on him, um, and they asked me like, "Yo, what was like, what was the difficulties or like challenges of like making this story?" It was a very generic job interview question, but the story was so damn deep. Like I was able to go deep mm-hmm. with him, and I told him I was like, th- I gave him all the layers. Like, all right, well, I'm dealing with a black man who's in jail. Start right there. There's a whole historical backdrop. Yeah. to just us being in jail. Yeah. And then he's in jail for a violent crime. Whole nother backdrop to that. Well, then he's an athlete. And there's a disproportionate, like, view. There's disproportionate, not disproportionate. What's the word I want to use? It's like a, it's a messed up view of yeah. how athletes are portrayed when it comes to, like, crime. Mm-hmm. Because they're public figures, so mm-hmm. when they do something, it gets reported a lot more than if any of us was to just, yeah. like, yeah. get arrested for assault. Yeah, it's yeah. exaggerated right? that, It's really a problem in, like, college athletics mm-hmm. because you – if you just read the paper in a local college town, you would think, wow, the athletes are a bunch of criminals. Yep. Yeah. Right? Well, that's because the math majors don't get reported on. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, that's real. they get arrested yeah. with assault. So that's it real. skews the numbers a little bit in the perception. Right? Yeah. So you're dealing with that at large in the NFL, too. So it's like, all right. So we already right there, before I even talk to Brandon, have, to, and I never did for the story, by the way, but that's layers on layers on layers. Um, and then you have to deal with the fact that, okay, you're writing about this athlete, um, who's in jail for this violent crime? Well, also it's a violent crime against a woman, mm-hmm. right? in the post Ray Rice era of covering the NFL. Yeah, whole another layers to that. That story yeah. took like six months. Yeah, right. But it's all that care into one one piece. Um, yeah. And the, but it's stuff like that that would have got me hired by other places mm-hmm. if I'd have wanted it. And that's mm-hmm. just a piece that I really like. You wouldn't even think about all those layers just going in because our thesis was, man, where is Brandon? Yeah. And Google is like, oh, he's in prison. We should write about that. Yeah. But you can't just do that. Like another publication did. It was a terrible story. Yeah. Right? It didn't have those layers. Yeah. And Brandon's attorney probably called them. Like, yo, yeah. y'all yeah. bugging. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 What's yeah. going yeah. on? Yeah. And then there was like a fifth layer to that. Brandon tried to get out of his conviction because he claimed 
that the damages he suffered to his head playing football is making him act irrationally. Mm-hmm. Now the judge wasn't hearing it, but now you got a CTE layer yeah. yep. to this yeah. story. Yeah. It's yeah. like that's all one yeah. story. But if I didn't think about that, the story either would have sucked. All right, I got a call from Brandon's lawyer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. context. Know? And I didn't, you know, a it didn't suck. B I didn't get the call from his lawyer. So it's great. Yeah. Anytime yeah. the lawyers don't call you, yeah. that's yeah. a win. Okay. And nobody wants to get sued. <laughs> so <laughs> like that, like but that's an example like that Brandon story of all that can go into just like. When you when you decide I'm gonna humanize my subject, even if they are in prison, yeah, right, like yeah. just because you're in prison, I mean you're not a human no more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're a convicted human. Yeah, but you're not a human. You're still a human. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that was a really like probably the best example I can give of like your approach. H- how I try to be, like yeah, my approach and how yeah. to be careful and yeah. right with care, even if it's something as like dark and gloomy as yeah. why yeah. A brothers in prison. No, I love that man. Thank you for explaining that the way yeah. you did because I think a lot of people need to know that. There's so much more that goes into why people do what they do. And I, it's crazy because uh, we were at this event um, a couple weeks ago and we were just talking about networking with people. And sometimes the only time you, when you network, all you do is ask people, hey, what do you do? And I'm like, man, I'm the type of person like I want to know why you do what you do. And I think that's where you get these type of responses because everybody does something that people are familiar with. But you got to get to the, you know, the deeper intention behind it. So thank you for sharing that, bro. It's, yeah. it's, it's well, it's tricky, too in this space because people don't know because you know we're all from around here and there's not a lot of like black writers Mm -hmm. there's black people on tv doing media but they probably telling you it's about to rain and if you live in seattle that's probably the most useless job (laughs) in the city (laughs) is being on tv telling anybody in seattle it's about to rain you know you on cairo telling about the rain like bro come on and then we (laughs) yeah and we get iphones and it's like bro how are there still even weather people right or then you but then you have other black people on tv you know shout out to homie jesse jones at cairo uh Mm -hmm. I think who else has had there's very few people. My homie Tony Black was on King, my homie Femi was on Como, like but like that's the T V space. It's a totally different bag yeah. Yeah. than than writing. Right. The minute I told my dad my job, he's like, Oh, so you get tickets. It's like, Well, nah, dad. It's not <laughs> but I see why he thinks that, right? Yeah, a forty yeah, something sure. year old black dude went to Rainier Beach and yeah. you met no journalist, you know, yeah, unless yeah, you score mm-hmm. forty at beach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you talk to somebody mm-hmm. in the paper. Yeah. Right? And that's usually a white dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like there's some and then there's layers to it. Now the social media aspect comes into it. Like, and this is not even just with the fans or just the the average uh, consumer of sports. This is what the players have this issue deciphering too. I'm different than Adam Schefter, and we're both different than Stephen A. Mm-hmm. But we're all in the media. Yeah, it's it it can get conflated a lot, you know. Um, exactly. And it, it definitely in like just news reporting, but if we just keep it to sports, it's like I'm on the ground. I'm at practice every day. Talk mm-hmm. to the players, agents, coaches. Like I'm like in the building. Then yeah. there's people like Adam who report from a studio, do their job. Doesn't really give his opinion, just says, hey, this transaction mm-hmm. happened, this trade happened, mm-hmm. this team's thinking this. Okay, that's that's one part of it. Mm-hmm. And then Stephen A might get on there and just talk his shit. Yeah. Totally, th- that's three different roles. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm yeah. with one team most of the time. Adam covers the whole league. Stephen A covers all the sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we could all be talking about Russell Wilson on yeah. a given day or on a given podcast, but it's different. We have different roles, different information, different kind of obligations and relationships to like protect, yeah. you know, yeah. like I'm on a, I can't just like, let's say Geno Smith was asked this year. I'm not saying he will be, mm-hmm. but I just can't get me and Chris can't get on our Seahawks man to man podcast yeah, and just yeah. be up here. Like Geno yeah. Smith is ass. No, for sure. Mm-hmm. We just can't do that. Yeah. Right. Like I could, but it's just, come on. The locker room ain't got no yeah. security. These dudes yeah. are huge. Yeah, like you, you gotta, gotta watch your mouth. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta read the room Yeah, yeah. Like, by the room. I mean, yeah. yeah where yeah. you're at your environment. Come on, man, yeah, I'm yeah. five, eight bucks, 70. Bro. Like I'm not about to, you know, like, People get on the radio sometimes and like with shit on Russ's O lines. Like, cool, I feel you if they're not playing well, but like, you still gotta watch your mouth. Like, yeah. <laughs> six six dude, three hundred. You talking about and ain't security in the locker room. <laughs> but like, Colin Cowher is not. He don't have to abide by them same rules. Yeah. Yeah. Get on Fox and talk crazy. Yeah, he can say what. It, and yeah. he can. That's fine. It's his mm-hmm. show. But he don't have. He, he's doing it from L.A. I'm doing. You know, I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm. I have to be in Renton at the VMAC yeah. the next day, mm-hmm. and that's a different obligation entirely than you know Pablo Torre. Yeah. On ESPN or whoever, like yeah. trying to give all these examples, people see you see this, but it all just becomes the media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, one of the recent examples, it's probably not the best one, but this one is on my tip of my tongue, is when uh, Chad Wheeler, the Seahawks, like damn near beat his girlfriend to death, right? And there was a lot of people here, like, yo, how come the media is not talking about this? You know, but there's layers to it. Mm-hmm. I reported on it two days before it went 
it got big. Yeah. Right. But then Shannon Sharp had a big thing about it. Then yeah. it was like, oh, now the media cares. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Media, mm-hmm. all media ain't the same. Yeah. Shannon's not obligated to be on each level of like which third string offensive tackles are guilty of assault. Yeah. Or not. Yeah. I am on this particular beat. So I'm reading this stuff like, yo, why, why the media not talking about Chad Willis? Like, bro, I just wrote about this two yeah. days ago. Yeah. It's right here. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, or the Seattle Times probably like, yeah, dog, yeah. we've been reporting on this. Yeah. But it's things go public and or go viral. Or, you know, yeah. Shannon gets it or ESPN yeah. gets it. We all have different just obligations. Yeah. Shannon's up there to give his opinion. Yeah. Right? I'm here to largely give you the facts yeah. and write about people. So I, and, but it's hard for, uh, I think it's hard for everyone to, to decipher who's who yeah. because it's all just on your feed. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, I'll have yeah. a tweet. Shannon will have a tweet. Stephen A has a tweet. How y'all know we different? Yeah, <laughs> we all yeah. just tweeting about the same well, thing. Well, well, you are different because you have a different upbringing and a different, a different, yeah. you know, different uh, experience coming up, right? And you're, you're from Seattle, right? Yeah. So let's let's get into that. I really want to get into kind of like your upbringing and um, just from your perspective, what was it like growing up out here for you and your experience? You know, uh, you know, I went to Franklin. Well, first off, I went to AAA, African American Academy, okay. up yeah. there on Beacon Hill. It's not yeah, a, uh, okay. it's not there no more. I don't think uh, it's, yeah. They used the building for something else. Yeah. But it was a, a K through eight school, um, as black as it sounds. Like they was having us wear uniforms, teaching us Swahili. Mm. Um, all the teachers wasn't black, which now that I think about it, was a little weird. <laughs> like <laughs> we had a lot of white teachers. Wow. I had a white teacher named Miss Bird who was like married to like a black homeless guy or something like that. It was. Really weird. She was like the language arts teacher in uh, sixth grade. Like a Jordan Peele movie. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very like boondocksy skit. Yeah. Like oh, uh, somebody could have. If I was like in creative, I really would write about, <laughs> like write a script uh, on Miss Bird. Yeah. But like that, that alone was like an experience in itself. I'm just like used to being around black people, and mm-hmm. that's a huge thing. The more I've like learned, uh, grew up around people who's not used to that, mm-hmm. or even like meet some of my homies who grew up in like Issaquah. They ain't used to grow, growing up around black people, and they be black. Yeah, you know, or like yeah. some Amish or whatever, yeah. some of these some of these other spots. So like going to AAA was like an experience in itself. I'm just so used to like blackness kind of being embraced. Like mm-hmm. we didn't call assemblies assemblies. They were called Harambe's, right? Like I said, mm-hmm. they taught us like Swahili's. They didn't call us students. They made sure we referred to ourselves as scholars. Like wow. scholar of the week, scholar mm-hmm. of the month, scholar yeah. of the year. That's big. It was just language. Yeah. I didn't realize that at the time. But like, what's his name came to our school? Uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu. He wow. came in fourth grade. I had no idea. I think I fell asleep. No, I was nine. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you know, yeah. I didn't know the significance of Bishop Desmond yeah, Tutu yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah. But, like, he came to the school, you know, in 2001, I want to say. Like, I had these influences around me. I wish I was old enough to appreciate them yeah. at the time. Uh, but then, like, even going to Franklin, uh, Franklin High School here in South Seattle, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that's when I just grew up. <laughs> like, that's when I had to le- You learn so much outside of a classroom. Yeah. It don't yeah. even make no sense, everything you learn. Learn a lot of social skills. Yeah. You really do. Just trust and, and and who to be around, who to not, what you don't want to be. You see, mm. like, I know seeing what you want to be is very important, too. Mm. And I had that in media. Like, I keep mentioning Stephen A. Smith. Seeing him on TV every day was, oh, I need to be that. Yeah. Like, I need to be up there talking talking my shit. I'm not six foot. I can't dunk, so I'm probably not going to make the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, for people who, like, <laughs> not super familiar with the Seattle high school basketball scene, I'm a <laughs> year younger than Peyton Siva. Okay. Right? So, th- our team was very good. Yeah. Like, when I got cut yeah. junior year, I was hurt. But then we won state. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Like, yeah. uh, there's a reason yeah. I wasn't good enough to make the team. Was nah, like, they were, we were they the were, best team in the... There were some dogs on it. Yeah, team, we, won, yeah. F- we won state when I was in eighth grade. You know, Beach won a bunch of state titles. Franklin, you know, I'm a year older than Tony Roten's, you mm-hmm. know, Garfield team. So, mm-hmm. like, there was some... Yeah. Some dogs. Oh, yeah. It was very yeah. hard yeah. Yeah. to make the team. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. if you don't make the team and you around all the... you. You know, at this school, you got to figure out what you want to do if you want to be around sports. Yeah, you know, tried right. out for the baseball team. That didn't work. Mm. Uh, that was terrible. I tried to catch a fly ball, like cupping it, like by my by my <laughs> hip. You know, you're supposed to put it over like your forehead. Yeah, you know, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm supposed to know. I ain't playing yeah. baseball. I'm just trying to still be around sports. Too yeah, small yeah. to play football. Yeah. Mom's not having it. Um, so, like, how do I stay around sports? Mm. Um, and like the 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 faster version of that, and like how I got into journalism is I really actually was into, like, acting mm. a lot. Like, I took the drama class. Like we had a drama teacher named Miss Smith. She was in, like, an old movie, uh, Officer and a Gentleman, I want to say, that 80s movie. Okay. I mean, white people joints. But it was big in the yeah. 80s, like yeah, the yeah. big white people joints, okay. you know, like Twilight or something mm-hmm. be now. Yeah. Um, so she was in that. And I took the class, like, three, four times because I just really liked the idea of acting. The class didn't have any homework, which, as you guys know, in high school, oh, any yeah. class with no homework, yeah, yeah. That's a sign right there. me uh, yeah, yeah. You're doing that on the schedule. Yeah, so, cooking, yeah. gym, yeah. pottery, yeah. whatever. Don't <laughs> I don't need a backpack. Ceramics, now. yeah, whatever. <laughs> Wood shop. All the yeah. classes that don't got homework. Just come as you are. Sign I love me those up. Classes. Yeah, 
love mm-hmm. love that. But eventually, my counselor was like, "Yo, Mike, you can't just keep taking drama. We're not gonna yeah. get you no credits." I was like, "All right, what else you got?" Uh, all right, I'll take the TV class. The uh, it was called QTV, where you like we had our basically version of Sports Center. I gotcha. forget who was hosted at the time, but I got kicked out of the class the first day, and I just can't remember. Yeah. Next time I run into my homie Q, I got to ask him. We both got kicked out. Somehow he got let in. I didn't. I hope he didn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I've thought about that every year. It's his birthday, and I wish him happy birthday. I want to ask him like, bro, did you tell? <laughs> like, how did you? How did I not get? How did you get? Uh, how did I not get kicked out yeah. of uh, Mr. Faulkner's class? I was, you know, upset about that. But anyway, the last thing left was all right. Take the journalism class from Miss Watts. I'm like, all right. I'll take it. I never really written anything before, and I ended up just like really rocking with it. And I think it was just like the interviewing people mm-hmm. and and just like being. It was writing for like the yearbook or something. Yeah. It wasn't like the big biggest deal in the world, but like just interviewing different people on the yeah. track team, yeah. or whatever cross country football team. I was like, oh, this is not bad. Yeah, I didn't do nothing. I didn't plan on doing nothing with that. I was like, mm-hmm. I still want to be on TV. Mm-hmm. But like that was that was like my introduction to journalism, which compared to a lot of my peers as I've gotten older and learned like. That was real late. Yeah. <laughs> Most of yeah. the people that you'll meet that are like winning awards or been doing this for 10, 20 years, like, oh, yeah, I grew up reading such and such as column in this paper. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. I ain't read the Seattle Times at all yeah. growing up. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Like, I yeah. Did, we had it in the house, but it was mostly like put under the tree on Christmas, yeah. you know? The, yeah. yeah. If we potty training the dog, put the newspaper down. That's <laughs> yeah, why, you yeah, know, yeah. if you move in and you got to yeah. wrap the dishes, yeah. that's what we got know? the Seattle Times yeah. in the house for. It's not like I'm sitting there reading the Sunday column with my yeah. dad, yeah. reading mm-hmm. Percy Allen's column or something like that. Shout out to the homie Percy, a black journalist mm-hmm. out here. Percy's the homie. Yes, sir. Uh, but like, I wasn't doing that. Mm-hmm. My introduction to it was like, oh, I just take journalism so I, t- so I can get some credits and get but out that of here. Was, on you, time. Know, that's, you know, it's crazy because we, we have this conversation a lot with guests that come on here and um it's about when you reflect back you realize a lot of things um that a lot a lot of elements of who we were when we were younger play a major role in our success today right and i think um even if it wasn't something you were you were super excited about or looking for it happened for a reason you know what i mean i believe everything happens everything happens for a reason right um and and it's as as much as you think it's late i actually think that's pretty early too you know like yeah, I, it's I, relative. It's relative. You know, to, yeah. to to find something and be able to just at least get your reps in that early is is really dope. And um, I guess for, I'm curious if that's your when that that being your initial kind of entry point to journalism. Um, I guess when did it become something that you really can see as like okay, I can take this serious. I can go somewhere with this. I can probably do something with this. Let's see. Uh, I had an English teacher in freshman year at Wazoo. I don't remember his name. And I, I I tell this story a lot, and I really wish I remembered his name because he's really important. I was trying to get my grade raised. It was like January 2011. Um, and this is when the Saints and the, the 49ers were in like the divisional round of the playoffs in the NFL. And we just started talking about football. And we started talking about the game. I'm previewing the game. I'm like, yo, this is what's going to happen. You know, this is – like this, I think the Niners are going to go. I think this is when Kaepernick is their quarterback mm-hmm. at the time, either him or Alex Smith. Mm-hmm. And we're, he's just like, yo, like, you should probably have, like, a column in the student paper or something. It's called a Daily Evergreen. He's like, you should have a column in a Daily mm-hmm. Evergreen. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that sounds cool, but, like, my grade, though. Let's like, mm-hmm. focus here. You yeah. know, like, I need this I need this grade change. Um, and he's just, like, influence and influence and, like, saying, and, and I don't even, I don't think he changed my grade, you know, which is maybe that's why I don't remember his name. <laughs> he didn't change my grade. Uh, but, like, that just stuck with me. And I didn't go straight to the paper after that, um, but I just remember um, that get, that put it in my head yeah. because I really wanted to be on TV. Like, I cannot yeah. stress enough how yeah. Charles Barkley and Stephen A. Smith just put it in my head, like, yeah. just by seeing them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like, yo, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Like, they're just talking about sports? I got this. Like, yeah. I, I can I can do it. I used to watch First Take all the time and mm-hmm. Inside the NBA yeah. uh, on TNT. Like, loved it. And I kept, I just, I, I had this idea of being on TV, and I don't remember what, person this was it basically made it clear to me like i've had my dress in 2009 it was kind of this idea like look there's an image to be on tv and if you do this with the hair you're probably not gonna you know Mm. you're you're gonna have to cut it Mm. whoa Mm. 19 year old me ain't cutting a damn Mm. thing yeah (laughs) Yeah. i'll I'll change my whole career if i need to yeah Mm. like okay if i can't get on tv all right, how can I look at this? Now, another show I used to watch was uh, Around the Horn on ESPN. Mm-hmm. If you notice, Around the Horn is a really revolutionary show. It's one of the few shows that features people of color yep. who aren't former athletes giving opinions. Mm-hmm. And it also features women mm-hmm. that's in, that aren't former athletes as well. Mm-hmm. Ain't really no other shows doing that in abundance. Yeah. They may have yeah. one woman pull up. Mina yeah. Kimes on yeah. there. Yeah. Like, 
It's very like you watch. You can turn around the horn tomorrow, the day after this runs. You probably see Monica McNutt, black woman. You might see Jackie McMullen, a, a white woman. You might see mm-hmm. Mina Kimes, an Asian woman. Mm-hmm. See Pablo Torre, Asian man. Mm-hmm. Kevin Blackstone, black man. Mm-hmm. Woody, uh, Woody White, dude. So you probably don't count for this example. But like Michael Smith, mm-hmm. Jamel. Well, Jamel don't work there no more. But you guys get my drift. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm naming no, all these people who are they don't fit the usual mold of a TV show mm-hmm. on sports. It's usually white guy. Black former athlete, go. Mm, Let's yeah. make it rock. Yeah. Like Undisputed yeah. uh, is on, on Fox. You like know? a template. Yes, it's very much a template. Mm-hmm. And Around the Horn, one of the few inspirational spots was like, oh, so I don't have to be able to dunk to get out here and talk my shit. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Okay, well, how did those guys get there? Look them up. Well, everyone I just, Michael Smith, Bomani Jones, Kevin Blackstone, Jay Adande, all the brothers on there, oh, they're just former writers. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. What's, what about this Michael Wilbon guy on PTI? Oh, former writer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Washington Post. Cool. I'll just write, and then if I get big enough, then I can be on TV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay, I, can I write? Shit, my English teacher said I can. Boom. Go to the. It's all uh, clicking. Yeah, it's go to the Daily clicking. Evergreen. Try to get a job. And shout out to the homie Sean Quentin. I think Sean still works at the Seattle Times. He hired me at the Daily Evergreen and hired me to cover swimming. I can't even swim, but that was my first job covering Wazoo swimming. Wow. For like I don't know, eleven bucks an article or something like that. Uh, and I'll never. I'll. That my English teacher, even though I don't remember his name, I'll never forget him. And Sean. I'll never forget Sean for yeah. giving me my first yes. ever journalism Shout job. Out Sean. Even though I was not qualified for it. All I had was them little clips from yearbook. Mm-hmm. And high school clips is like uh, story examples. Gotcha. Like you're writing. You call them clips. Um, so all I had was my little stories from uh, high school. And I, I pray I never get big enough that those leak. Because those <laughs> stories were so bad. Yeah, today's day and age. Oh, my God. Nothing like, safe. Nothing safe. <laughs> yo, like, it'd probably be like a rapper you find, like, his eight his eight years old freestyling for his mom on Christmas. <laughs> yeah, and, like, yeah. yeah, like, those are embarrassing rhymes. Like, mine would be very embarrassing. But you appreciate them, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I needed to fail or do bad to, you know, learn from, you know. Like, yeah. that, that helped. But, like, that's kind of how I got into the game and everything's just kind of been growing from there. I love that, man. Yeah, Love man, that. that's dope. So uh, I kind of wanted to ask you, too, like, because um, obviously, you know, you grew up South Seattle, went to Franklin. Yes, sir. So what was it like going to Pullman after all that? Yo, so Seattle's very, I don't know the numbers, but Seattle's very white, right? Like, black yeah. people make up, what, 6 7% of within, like, the King County or city limits or whatever yeah. of Seattle. Yeah. I wouldn't have known that growing up. Yeah, I, mean, I grew up in like in South Seattle. If you grew up in the CD or wherever, Kent, Renton, what's mm-hmm. your, yeah, you know Seattle, where the, yeah, yeah, you just know where the Seattle black people's at. You know, yeah. like you go to school, a bunch of black people. Franklin was like black and Asian. Mm-hmm. We probably had like six white people at, at Franklin. Mm-hmm. So going to Pullman, I'm like, yo, oh, okay, this is different. Yeah, like, and it still happens now when I go places like, and I'm, I, I know I'm not tripping because other people have noticed it too over the last like decade. Everyone would stare at me when I'm walking in. Cause like, this is not only was that my introduction to being around like a ton of white people. Cause I'd never really been the minority in that regard. Mm-hmm. Franklin was super black. I went to a school that had African in the name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Wherever yeah, I went, yeah. I was like, it's good money. Yeah, you know. And even my driver's ed class was an African guy. You know, shout out to Moha and Sky Skyway. Like everything I've done was super black. Mm-hmm. That's dope. So then I go to Pullman. I'm like, yo. This is <laughs> this is different. Like, yeah. there's a uh, what's the orientation called at Wazoo? Uh, you go there in the summer and you pick your classes. Yep. And you tour. It's called a live. I did a yeah, live. live. It's yeah, like yep, a two yep. day orientation over there. And I'm looking around. My parents are there with me. I'm like, yo, this is trippy. Mm-hmm. I met I met this black girl there the first day. I was like, yo, we're about to be best of friends. Cause like, <laughs> it's just me and you and it's a live group. Yeah. Like, it's, it's survival. I'm like, yeah. you know, find who's yeah. the culture. Yeah. I know. Uh, but like. Beyond that, the other thing, probably the second most instructive thing that going to Pullman did was introduce me to all the different types of black people. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I'm from, you know, around here, it's the same type. We all wearing North Faces and Jays yeah. and listening to the yeah. same music yeah. and wearing, the, you know what I'm saying? We dancing to the same music and everything. And like, we kind of got a vibe here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's black people from Tacoma that's a totally different energy. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. black mm-hmm. people that grew up, you know, in Pasco and. Kirkland mm-hmm, and like, Bothell mm-hmm. and it's like, like Tri-Cities all that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and yep. they they have a whole different way of kicking it mm-hmm, you yeah. know mm-hmm. and then I, I kind of that was my introduction to black people not being a monolith which mm-hmm. is very important very mm-hmm. important that, mm-hmm. and I, I have a little bit more empathy now for when white people think we are mm-hmm. a monolith now mm-hmm. once you get a certain age I'm like come on man yeah, yeah. come yeah. on use yeah. your Google. let's grow up guys yeah <laughs> but like initially like I can understand why some people think all oh, black people is like a certain way yeah and part of that is because there are some things that we just all kind of grew up with yeah. whether it's like 
I figured through Twitter, I've learned we all had the same type of blanket in the house. We all had the same type of cups. Nice. Everybody's <laughs> mom got that same drawer yeah. that got the, yeah. the Chinese packets and the yeah. stuff that nobody uses. Who's it's selling like that, that stuff? It's though, crazy that yeah. all the things that we all the had. Bags, all yeah, the yeah, plastic yeah, bags yeah, for yeah, the garbage yeah, bags. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There yeah, are the some culture, like yeah, universal culture. black things, yeah, right? Yeah. But like black people are a monolith. There's people, you know, we dress different, talk different mm-hmm. from all over different parts of just even your own state. Yeah. You know, there's like it's, it, the way I grew up and the way somebody grew up in Pasco or even Spokane is entirely different. Mm-hmm. And that introduced me to that. And that was very informative because once you realize that once you once you have that inquisitive mind like I have and you meet different people from different places, you want to learn about them. Like, yeah. I'm always asking people a ton of shit. Yeah. Where are you from? How'd you grow up? If mm-hmm. I, every time I'm in like a wedding or something like that, I'm like, oh, how'd you meet the bride? Yeah. Oh, okay, what's this? Well, what's her parents like? What do they do? Blah, blah. I'm quizzing the hell out of them yeah. just off of kind of seeing how they grew up. Yeah. You know, and that really informs, like, the more information you got, like, and when you get into the journalism world, the more you can, like, humanize your yeah. subjects. Go back yeah. to what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Ties because... In. Everybody ain't going to be, like, uh, of the culture, even though they black. You know, it'd be from somewhere else. I remember the first time I did a story on Ike Rebu um, at Waz, he was a basketball player. I did mm-hmm. a story on him, like, my junior year. He was, like, a freshman or something like that. Like, I think Ike's, like, Nigerian, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, see, he's – that's a whole different, you yeah. know, energy, you know, mm-hmm. than, and, and even, like, there's just so much to it that I learned at, at, at Wazoo, you know, that was just not – just beyond, like, all right, cool, now I need to learn how to – behave around white people yeah. mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. what that actually means yeah. you know yeah. the will smith slapping the, what's his name brought like the back that dialogue of how we supposed to behave mm-hmm. in front of white people mm-hmm. like no 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 we ain't gotta like behave quote unquote they can't put us in time out yeah mm-hmm. um but like just how to move yeah no i think mm-hmm. i think um to 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 add on to that i think like going to a pwi is just crazy because i think like the environment you're in plays a huge role in how you're able to learn and and excel right. in the classroom and, and whatever it is you want to do and i think Sometimes when you're just dugging it out, like you said, just going through it, you don't even think about how much you have to actually, like, block out just to try to perform. You know what I mean? And I think yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think that we, we got to find a way to make it easier for the next generation coming up. And I think conversations like this will help, too, so mm-hmm. people know what they're getting into. But um, staying on the east side of Washington for a second, because um, – now, you definitely had to kind of, like, learn the ropes, right, in the, in oh, the journalism yeah. space. And I did read somewhere that you uh, you did – one of your earlier jobs was with the uh, Moscow Daily News. <laughs> yep. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And w- one thing I know about journalism and just being in the media is, you know, sometimes you don't know how people are going to respond, right, to, to things that you write, things that you say about them, even if your intention is obviously pure and you have no malice. Um, but I did read that there was an incident where maybe a coach didn't like something you said. Oh, ain't no maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely didn't like what you said. He didn't like that at um, all. And, I, and I, when I saw that, I, I was curious if you could touch on that because there are people who may be listening or watching who want to get into this space. How do you, I guess, deal with that type of confrontation and, and backlash, if you want to call it that, um, but still maintain the professionalism? Yeah, that's that. very, very tough. I, I, for people who want to get into it, and I, I want to tell as many people, black people in Seattle or wherever, yeah. this path, it's, it's very, it's tricky because when you go to college, right, like you root for your college team because mm-hmm. you're there, right? And then you get into journalism and they teach you will be objective. Well, mm-hmm. it's like, I pay X amount of dollars to go here and I love this team. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean yeah, I'm not yeah. supposed to like root for them? And that distorts things, mm-hmm. you know, whether you're writing for like every school has like a blog now, like yeah. that's a fan blog. Like, we have cougfan.com. Shout yeah. out to the homies at cougfan. They yeah. give, you know, I used to work for them too. But like, it's very hard to be objective when it's like, I, my whole, what are you talking about? My whole closet is wazoo stuff. <laughs> like yeah. I just got, mm-hmm. I'm wearing a crimson mm-hmm. and gray hoodie right now. Like, oh, what do you mean I can't wear that to the game? Yeah. And so that makes it very tough to, you know, get into when you're not in like cops and courts. When you're covering courts, you really understand objective. Like, I don't know this dude. He might have did it. He might not. Yeah. Sports is a lot different. Yeah. Um, so that line is very tricky. But the important thing to remember is that you are, a, are not a fan. Mm-hmm. You are not a fan. Your job is to is to humanize that the the subjects and your job is to report. That's what your job is to do. It's not to root for your team. It's not to put go Cougs at the end of your articles. It's mm-hmm. not to write with like a Coug centric slant or a Husky centric slant. Or yeah. if yeah. you go to Central or Western, it doesn't really matter the school. You know, yeah. you go to Kansas or Wisconsin or whatever. That's very tricky yeah. because naturally, you know, it's like I had to scrub a bunch of my tweets that was like go Cougs and stuff like that. You yeah. know, because it's like yeah, it costs a lot to go there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. in the stands. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. rooting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that all changes, and that's a it's a very tricky balance um, because you're around so many like 
biased journalists at college, at the college level, because the people who live in these small college towns, they go there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. very tough. Very, uh, very few schools are like Seattle that have like a big, major, objective outlet like the Seattle Times. We mm-hmm. don't have that. Yeah. yeah. At these, so like that's an important thing to remember. You're not a fan. Yeah. Your job is to be. Um, it's not to be friends with the coaches. It's not to be friends with the players. They're not your friends. They, they're almost like work buddies. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You got yeah. the homie at work, like, oh, all right, bro, I'll see yeah. you later. Ask you to go get a drink later. You're like, nah, because yeah. we don't really, you know, he yeah. get married, you tell him congrats, you're not going to the wedding. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like that yeah. type of people. Yeah. You know, like you, you're not you're not buddy-buddy with the point guard on yeah. your college team. And that's and that's tough because you might see him at the party. Yeah, you know, I had a lot of issues with that at Wazoo and Idaho. Yeah, um, you know, I'd go out and I'd see the guys and like, uh oh, damn, reporters in here. It's like, come on, man, I ain't no snitch. I'm here. To, I'm, here <laughs> yeah. to kick, I'm here to kick it. Yeah, but like, I didn't you, think about that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. no, was very and especially because you know you see me, I'm black, I got yeah. dreads, yeah. I'm walking around Idaho, everybody yeah, know for mm-hmm. sure. You know, who I, who I am, yeah. you know, especially if they realize I'm not a student. So I think that's the that's the real tough part to to balance right away. Um, the other part is, man, you got to be a good writer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No matter what the hell you do. Yeah. Like, honestly, like writing translates to so many like good skills in the world. You know, reading and writing. I understand now why we start with kids with that shit. Because mm-hmm. if yeah. you can't do those two things, you have a hard time getting right. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless you're atle- athletic as shit yeah. or your parents are rich. Yeah. Like that's mm-hmm. the, and you know, otherwise... Learn to read and, and write because that's how you're going, you know, you're going to get ahead. Like there's so many, there's so many like little steps you got to get to before you can even get cussed out by a football coach. Yeah, like yeah, I, like I eventually sure. did. Um, the, the coach you're talking about is Paul Petrino at Idaho. I wrote something he didn't like. He cussed me out, tried to fight me, um, lied about it. <laughs> the next day called me a liar on TV, then apologized off camera. It was just a mess. Yeah. I, st- I still don't like the University of Idaho <laughs> for that. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I just brought that up because I, um, I do think, you know, a lot of times people don't know what goes, comes with the job sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's kind of part of understanding your role. And I think what you're speaking to is big. Sometimes you want to get into a field because the, you're fascinated by maybe something that caught your eye. Right. But when you pull the curtain back, you know, there's a lot more that goes into playing the role. So understanding the role and being professional. So that's some good advice for, for those coming up. Yeah, just, get just be it. respectful. Yeah, really. Yeah, like, yeah. that's the that's the thing. Like, I'll never really – I try not to disrespect him. But like I was saying, like, if I'm critique an old lineman, right, I may I critique how he performs, not who he is. Mm-hmm. That's not mm-hmm. my job to really critique nobody, at least not in the public space. I could think yeah. you do something whack, you know what I'm saying? I'm scrolling through your Instagram. I'm like, I'm seeing your likes, seeing the picture with your wife. I'm like, all right, okay, he's bugging. But, like, yeah, that's not yeah, my job to talk yeah. about that on a podcast. Yeah. You know, my job is to say, all right, did he catch the touchdown last week? Yeah. That's my job. And that's important because if you respect somebody, they respect you back. Mm-hmm. You know, like you guys just had Doug on the show. I think you guys have had Cliff on mm-hmm. um, too. I didn't cover Cliff too long before he hurt his neck, but like you know, Doug will tell you a lot. Of these guys will tell you. Bobby, we just had Bobby Wagner on the pod. Like mm-hmm. the reason why we just had Tyler Lockett come through the radio station mm-hmm. the last week. It's not because Tyler's my homie. You know, yeah. Tyler don't wish me Merry Christmas yeah. or nothing like that. Yeah. You know, but like I respect him. Yeah. You know, he respects me. The work I do, I criticize him. He can criticize me back. Yeah. You know, and it's always fair yeah you know and i think that's that's where the media we're failing right now as a mm-hmm. sportsman like whenever someone calls us out whether it's kyrie irving or whoever like goes off on the media even patrick beverly is going on his yeah. run on espn right now like yeah. even if i disagree with some of the individual points they make like yeah. i can see why someone like kyrie irving is like man this media shit is whack like yeah. y'all get away from me yeah. you know, kevin durant you know yeah. like we're we, everyone's on his burner account yeah. like, mm-hmm. like he's just like leave me alone let me tweet bro yeah. you know like yeah. I, I i can i can feel that because we just we turn everything into a spectacle. We tr- we don't operate. When I say we, I just say sports media yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah. Like operate with empathy. Yeah, you operate yeah. with empathy. Yeah, you'll you'll be all right. You will naturally respect people. Try to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Like yeah. I mentioned earlier, how I do when I interview people. Yeah, mm-hmm. like that's as much as your job, whether you're reporting or or anything. Yeah, like just don't disrespect nobody, and you'll be fine. I didn't disrespect that Idaho coach. He disrespected me. Mm. <laughs> I yeah. throw that out. Yeah, 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 let them know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm glad I'm glad you're kind of like uh, you're speaking on this because I feel like a lot of like us normal people or that don't report or don't write or whatever we kind of just see like like the Kyrie Irvings and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So we're like, man, what's going on with between media and players like that? But yeah. um, the fact that you're coming on here and you know you say like you be you try to be respectable, you know, like even in your writing, like we'll appreciate that too as readers. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because we're just like okay, and it'll be like a lot more like. I feel like believable. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we're like, oh, he's keeping it real yeah, at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, I don't know. I'm just saying I appreciate that, how you like, you you just respect is like number one when you 
Yeah, you, you have about to. Your writing. You know, yeah. If you can't respect nobody, how are they supposed to respect you exactly. back? You know, exactly. like, and, and to be fair. And I think yeah. the real the thing that's really tricky is is uh, we don't. And I, t- I started thinking about this. There's two things. One is post game, post mm-hmm. anything you do, like as an athlete. That's your, either your highest moment or your lowest moment. Yeah. And we're not used to that as like the average person. Like if you get an A on a test, nobody is standing outside your classroom. Yeah. Like, oh, how do you think? And vice versa. If you get an F on that test, ain't nobody waiting outside your class like, hey, yo, you kind of stupid, huh? Like, you didn't mm-hmm. study? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. that would be really tough. Now, imagine everybody watched you take the test on ESPN. <laughs> Millions yeah. of people watched it. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you sign up for that, what they do, but yep. I mean, there's still some empathy involved. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, mm-hmm. dude throws a game winning or game losing interception. Like, yes, he's he has to answer your questions. And yes, they're going to be tough questions. Yeah. But, like, acknowledge the difficult position that that guy is in yeah, yeah, as exactly. someone who's at the lowest moment of his career. He's sticking a bunch of cameras in his face. Yeah. Again, yeah. that's his job. Yeah. yeah. But just understand the position that they're in and why maybe sometimes they don't they don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. No, I think what's dope yep. is um, I'm glad you touched on that because I think in, in you're, you're somewhat judged by the company you keep, even though it may not be the company you want to keep, right? So, mm-hmm. like, when they wonder, when Kyrie's – kind of generalizing all of media as one thing. Um, what's dope about this era is you have the ability to kind of build your own platforms right. to kind of separate yourself and, and obviously show who you are as, as an individual. Um, and I think that's what allows for you to be able to kind of play both sides. Um, and I think the space in itself is obviously going to continue growing. But one thing I'm, I'm curious about, and, you know, our show is really about obviously representation and, and getting people to see that, yo, there's so many industries that we are – um, not only taking up space in, but excelling and succeeding in. And um, I was doing some research. I was looking at like the statistics and demographics as far as active journalists in the U S and it shows currently that black and African Americans make up about five point five point four 5.4% of the total and whites make up 70.8% of the total. Um, it was just crazy when it kind of just yeah, tripped no, me and out. I'm sure the numbers in sports media are even worse. Yeah, it, it trips me imagine. out when I see that. Um, and so from your experience being there, being, you know, for on the grounds and in, in, in the field, so to speak, um, I guess what, what can be some ways to kind of up those numbers, you know, and, and maybe some potential solutions? I you think, have any? yeah, I mean, the, the hiring of black people in any in industry really comes down to the people with hiring power wanting to hire black people. Mm. And like, I really, I, I simplify it and oversimplify it, I guess, uh, in a lot of ways. Mostly when I talk about like hiring coaches in like the NFL, you kind of see it every January. Like, oh, there's X amount of black coaches. The league yeah. is X black. You see it every mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always tell people, when people ask me, Mike, how can they hire more black coaches? I say, find a black guy and hire him. It ain't hard. <laughs> yeah. And I was a, uh, I used to work at the Moscow Pullman Daily News. I was a sports editor. We had to get summer interns every year. Now, there wasn't a lot of black writers for me to choose from. Um, but, like, one thing I always made sure, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to make sure I get a Coug. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, give me the best Coug writer there is to be this intern. And I hired a Coug. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't that hard because mm-hmm. I made the effort to do it. Same thing, like, with any job. If I'm an Amazon person or if I'm a, a sports editor, hey, we got a job open covering the storm for the Seattle Times. Let's get the best black rider we can find. Or maybe it's women's basketball. Let's get the best female rider we can find. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll find the best one if yeah. you make the effort. It's not if the excuse of, oh, you need, like, more females in America. You need more females to graduate from journalism schools. You need them to graduate from journalism schools in the area to create this pipeline. Yeah. It's bullshit. You don't, here. you don't need no pipeline mm-hmm. for a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You can go and find who you want to hire. Mm-hmm. And that's with anything. That's with black people. That's with... Uh, any minority that's with women and any literally any industry, you know, for the for the most part, you know, mm. unless it's something that like has to do with like size. Yeah. Then you're, you know, dealing with like a population issue, you know, or whatever. But for the most part, if I need a black engineer, yeah, I can just say, hey, give me the best black engineer, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, there is. You know, mm. I think of the the the, the scene from Soul Plane where uh, I think Kevin Hart tells Method Man that he wants a black pilot. Yeah. You know, um, and <laughs> Method Man, they end up hiring Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Because there was only two black pilots and yeah. one of them was already flying for Diddy you know, yeah. <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> but it was like, you know, Kevin Hart told him, give yeah. me a black pilot. Yeah. So what did Method Man go find him? A black pilot. Yeah. And there wasn't but only two. You know, this yeah. is a movie. Yeah. It's made yeah. up. But it's, yeah. it's that real. that's the same idea. It translates. There yeah. wasn't mm-hmm. but two black pilots in the whole world and Method Man found one. Yeah. yeah. You know, for, yeah. for Puff. Or yeah. for, excuse me, for Kevin Hart's character in that movie because they ran the airline. It's the same idea. Um, and that's what that's what can happen on a macro level. Yeah. On the on maybe the more intimate level is we just gotta pay it forward, mm-hmm. you know, with with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I give an example. You know, I used to work at the Seattle PI, SeattlePI.com, covering the Seahawks for 2017, um, and I left to go to the Athletic where I'm at now in 2018. I left. My boss was like, "All right, who do you 
we need somebody to replace you, Mike. You got any names in mind? Because we didn't know you was leaving, so we need some help. I'm mm-hmm. like, cool. Give him some names. You know, uh, two of the two of the three names that I gave was uh, the homies. That two of them was black, and one of them I like hammered at home. Like, yo, this dude right here, he's your guy. Like, yeah. call, call him. You know, and he ended up getting the job. Mm. You know, and then you know he was at the time covering like high school sports in Laredo, Texas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Terrible job. I never even heard that place. Yeah, it was just right on the border. Everybody yeah. there is Hispanic. <laughs> yeah. It's covering like high school sports, but he went from that to moving out back out here where he's from to cover the Seahawks. You know, took it from high school sports to the yeah. Seahawks. You go yeah. you hiring some kid, you covering some soccer in some random ass town. Mm. Now you covering Russell Wilson. Mm. Yeah. Right? So now he's got that job. It's the home, and his name is Ben. Shout out to my homie Ben. Mm-hmm. Now Ben, two years later, now he covers the Titans for the Tennessean. Wow. You know, he's like wow. the, the lead guy out there in Nashville. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's I didn't get Ben the job. He tells people that it's like I get it. That's the logic, you, yeah. the term you use. But Ben got himself the job because he's nice. Yeah. But I just did my part to help Ben get where he exactly. needed to be. You know, get him the expo. And it's that simple. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. they asked me who I want, who I said, hey, hire. All right, man, hire my man Ben. He nice. Yeah. Now they had to interview him and all that, but yeah. I did everything to make sure that he could get that. You know, pay it forward. And I hope that, you know. Um, if if Ben leaves the leaves the Tennessee and go somewhere, he does the same thing. And if I leave the, I probably won't leave the athletic. But mm-hmm. if I was to leave, I'm gonna do the same yeah. thing. You know, the, yeah. it's 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 kind of that simple. You know, and it's not just black people doing it; it's white yeah. people too. Yeah, there's a dude at the uh, Seahawks. You know, every time they have a job open, he DMs me. You know, and he says, "Hey, um, we got this job open. Can you send this link to the Society of Black Journalists or the Seattle Association of Black Journalists?" Mm. And, you know, and, and so I could pass, and I do. I pass it around. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's a white dude doing that. It's really just that simple. Yeah, you know what the Seahawks I mean, just did? They just hired a black dude. I just saw it today. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember his name. It's HBCU grad, though. I saw it when I was walking in here today. I love it. Like, it's that simple. Yeah. You just kind of just yeah. want to hire black people, and you can hire them. We yeah. here. Yeah, we. Th- I love yeah. that, man. And I think sometimes the numbers don't tell the whole story, too. And, I, and I'm glad you put it that way, because I like, I like what you said. Sometimes you just got to simplify it. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Because a lot of shit don't make sense as it is. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> really you know not, I mean? it's not that hard yeah. to just hire black people. To hire black people or women or whoever's yeah. not being hired, it's yeah. not hard to hire them. Like people make all these excuses about a pipeline. You don't need no pipeline. Yeah, yeah. you really don't. You yeah. find you if you want something, you'll go out and find it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, it's yeah. the internet. It's the yeah. age of the internet. There's somebody everywhere. Yeah, like, come on, man. And definitely yeah. paying it for it is is man. It just got to be practiced. Like, yeah, yeah. Bro. Like you know, I mean, like second nature at this with, point, with nothing expected in return though, yeah, yeah, too. Because like, sure. I didn't want anything from Ben. Yeah. I still don't. That's the homie. I just did it because I wanted to see him succeed. I don't even know Ben that well at the time, bro. It's yeah. the bigger. I just picture. wanted him to win. It's the bigger picture, yeah. man. Like yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. I think everybody got to look at. We're all we're all contributing in some way, shape, or form to mm-hmm. the greater good. And you know, you wasn't even thinking about that. You were just like, yo, let me make my contribution. I have an opportunity. Let's do it. Yeah, let, let me help my mm-hmm. homie. Help my homie win. And he's yeah, winning. for real. That's dope. I love that, man. Um. Man, I also want to ask you, bro, like, growing up in Seattle, obviously, being, like, Seattle sports fan growing up, like, do you ever sit back and just be like, damn, I'm, I'm running for the Seahawks, this is crazy? Every day. Yeah. Like, every, <laughs> I really don't take it for granted, and mm-hmm. it's really nice, like, and this is going to sound like a slight, but, like, I, like, I work at The Athletic, right, like, it's a subscription-based sports site, and, yeah. like, yeah. I don't even, I don't even know if my mom has a subscription, I don't know if my dad does, I don't even know if my closest homies do, and you know what, I think that's okay. Because mm-hmm. they give me the break from it. Because I'm not like, I could win a million awards. And they'll congratulate me and drink, yeah. you know, go to Total Wine. We'll get lit after. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, I'm still just Mike. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. still just like, like, all right, that's cool, bro. Like, mm-hmm. we just, you still just you to yeah. us. Like, mm-hmm. you'll yeah. never, you know, like, I'll never be too much. Big, like, keep me grounded yeah. in a way. Yeah. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't need them to focus. Like, I have people, I have my work people, my journalism people that I'm locked in with, group chats with, talk to every day, blah, blah, blah. But I just need my homies to kind of just, yeah. you know, keep keep me grounded. You know, mm-hmm. like there was a really, like a, a live example of that the other day. I lost this award. I lost an award for the the Pro Football Writers of America um, Emerging Writer Award. Mm-hmm. I was nominated for it second year in a row and I lost. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. It's named after Therese Paler. Uh, shout out to Therese, mm-hmm. the late Therese Paler. Rest in peace. Um, I lost it, right? My phone's blowing up, right? Because it's like a big deal that I lost. Two years in a row, a lot of people voted for me. They screenshot me. They bowed like, I voted for you, bro. Phone's mm-hmm. blowing up. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, you know, Erm uh, Erm knows the homie Marcus. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm on FaceTime with him, just ignoring all them calls, just kind of helping him out with something he's going through. Yeah. And I just, just didn't care about the award at yeah. all, you know, because yeah. it's just like my homies just kind of keep me grounded. We just chopping it up. We on yep. FaceTime. We joking yep. about the, the, the Celtic series coming yeah. up. We just, you know, just just mind just, just off it. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like it just kind of just keeps me uh keeps me grounded in a way and i and i need it because mm-hmm. like especially this last like 
month and a half. I mean, a lot of good things happened to me. Like you said, yeah. like that intro was long as hell. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That you gave because yeah. like winning a lot of shit, yeah. getting a lot of stuff. You know, getting yeah. radio shows. You know, like a new contract, yeah. everything. Like doing all right, but you do you do need to bring it back down yeah. to earth, and that's just so, man. That's just so that's just so helpful that I have that locally. I wouldn't have that if I was doing this and I moved to, you know, uh New York and I covered the Jets. Yeah. I'd be surrounded by people who like kind of just know me all professionally and mm-hmm. everything would be viewed in that lens. Yeah. Maybe yeah. now it's out here, it's like, all right, Mike, you wanna that's great. Love you, congrats. Can we go hoop, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, can we yeah. go play some football or yeah. something like that? Like let's hop on the sticks. Or something like that. It's just, yeah. it's just, uh, it, it keeps me grounded, and I just kind of put that in perspective. I always take a picture of my, uh, not always, but most of the time, I take a picture of my, the little nameplate, mm-hmm. and uh, when I'm at the game, it's like, oh, this is my seat in the press box, just to like, man, that's really dope. Like they yeah, got my yeah. name on here. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's spelled wrong, but it's yeah. annoying. Uh, but <laughs> gotta get that right. Come yeah, on, yeah, yeah, for real, yeah. man. At this point, come yeah. On, usually, usually the the road team gets it wrong. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, because yeah. they don't know me that well. That's, that's sure. fine. Mm-hmm. But like, I just like, man, you know. That's that's kind of lit. Like my yeah. name, my yeah. name is here. Like there's a record of me having been here, mm. and anyone my last name's like, oh yeah, no, nah, he was, he was here. Like I definitely think about that. It's not necessarily like the players or like I didn't like obviously didn't grow up rooting for Russell Wilson because yeah. you know, me and him yeah. is only a few years apart. But yeah. like just the idea of like you know what I'm here. You know yeah. my cousin, my I got a cousin. He's in jail. Uh, he's not getting out, but he he's in the like in their lockdown lockdown. Mm-hmm. But I talked to him on the phone a couple weeks ago. He was like, yo cousin, I seen you on TV. I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> Are you watching TV in there? Yeah. Uh, he, was, he was just like, yeah, he told me how. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. man. That was, I was like, yo, that's just crazy. Man, yeah. You could see me there. Yeah, I just talked to him like last week, too. He was like, you got a radio show? Can I listen to it in here? I'm like, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure it yeah, out. Figure, <laughs> yeah. Do you get FM in there? He's like, yeah, we do. So yeah, maybe yeah. he was listening yeah. uh, last Saturday. But like all that stuff beyond just the sports part of it, just the people that are just around me. That's yeah. why I don't, I don't ever really want to move here while I'm still doing this career. Cause like mm-hmm. that stuff is like, now it's just like, man, I want my cousin to be able to see me on TV. I yeah, feel like yeah. unless he transfers jails, he ain't going to be able to see me. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, unless I get on ESPN or something like that. But like, yeah, all the, the people around me just keep me grounded mm-hmm. in a way that I, I really need, like, I feel like everybody needs. No, for yeah, sure. You, know, you yeah, don't ever want right, to get too right. big. That's a powerful know, message. Forget who you are, yep. where you came from. Like, yeah. my homies keep me grounded in that. My family do too, but yeah. it's most, mostly my homies. No, that's, yeah. a, that's a powerful message, bro, because I think a lot of times people, you, you, you don't want to get too caught up in the identity of this is who I am, right? right. Like, we even talked, like you mentioned, we had Doug on here, and that was a, a large part of the conversation was him finding a way to like balance that out where he's like, I'm not just a football player. Right. And you're not just a journalist. You're not just a writer. Right. And, um, it's important for, for everybody to have that balance, man. It's good. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. especially for everything, you know, physical, mental health, all that. Man. Yeah, man. A lot Actually of that it I is mental health awareness month. I just thought about that. A lot of that I got from, not a lot of that, but Doug is big. a big, big reminder of that. And he's on a much larger scale. Like people, yeah. they, we idolize athletes mm-hmm. in a really unhealthy way. When you think about it, like, yeah, that's just like, the, I have a lot of jerseys, mostly from a fashion standpoint, but the idea of like he's wearing somebody else's name on you is kind of like wild, you know, from a jersey standpoint. Like mm-hmm. we we do that, and yeah. we'll spend thousands thousands of dollars to see somebody play. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the home, Chris wants to sit courtside, you know, at a storm game. I'm like, all right, I'll sit, yeah. I'll, I'll pay it to see Stu, Sue Bird's last game. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's what we do here, and it's like I can only imagine it's like how dehumanized a football player feels like in a violent sport yeah. too. Mm-hmm. So like. I'm trying to never get to that point where I forget who I am yeah. and just only focus on all the people telling me how great I am. Yeah. That's how you And you got yourself. so much more to do, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, like, yeah. man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just, I want to do so much dope stuff, man. The you media, know, when media has responsibility. Now, you know? one, one of the uh, one of the most powerful quotes I ever heard was from Jerry Seinfeld, and he was telling another young comedian who actually was like nine years in at the time. And uh, when he asked him, he was like, how many, how many years have you been doing comedy? The dude said nine years, thinking that was like something. And he was like, oh, you're a nine-year-old. Right. <laughs> and he was like, that's your age in comedy. And he's like, don't ever forget your age because, uh, you know, you won't get too big for the art form and that whole, that whole ideal. So, yeah, man, we, we're just getting started, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. Just the started. media has a real responsibility to to do something powerful. You mm-hmm. know, like when George Floyd killed, got killed, that really put that in perspective. You know, all I just couldn't write about depth charts and linemen and yeah. routes. And I was like, I have to do something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to do something else, write something more powerful, not necessarily like write about police brutality but just like something else yeah like, i feel like i have a you know like people with blue checks on twitter are like like idolize in some weird way it's like blue check twitter is a thing it's weird but yeah. like <laughs> all right i got twitter. the blue check yeah. you know i got the thirty thousand followers like I, 
I'm, if I'm gonna tweet something, let's let's make it matter. Yeah, you know, let's shed yeah. some light on something, yeah. share some information, an article, a thread. That's in, you know important. Yeah, you know, and that's just in sports. Like when people people really are shitting on the media, like the Trumpian way of doing it is not great. But in general, that we do have an obligation to like serve, you know, and, and be accurate and provide context. Yeah, and our language matters so much, mm-hmm. man. Like mm-hmm. like there's that run. It's a joke, but it's like real deal. If like when a when a white person shoot up a school or something like that, and they find a picture of them, and it'd be the most wholesome joint yeah. ever. Yeah, you know. Yep. And then yep. we we get killed by the police, and they find our mug shot. Yeah, you know? yeah. like, just like yeah. that's a media thing. Yeah. You yeah. know, like that's real. And we do that in sports yeah. too. Like we we have a way of talking about white athletes versus black athletes and athletes who. Mm. dress a certain way and talk a certain way and just mm. like we use coded language in a draft and like call this person a natural athlete but this person a gym rat and it's yeah. like okay why is he gritty and why is he a natural athlete yeah. it's like there's so much like I'm, I'm cognizant of all that yeah. and we have mm. to be you know because yeah. I have a responsibility once that shit gets published it's fact yeah. you know said so I can't yeah. mess up yeah. you know like I, I hold that pretty pretty carefully you know and if you mess up you know you don't want to do that you yeah. know credibility is like it's, it's you know it's it's huge. It's hard to it, it's you need it all the time, and once you lose it, it's hard to get back. Yeah, mm-hmm. you that's know? real. Mm-hmm. That's real, man. I can only imagine, man. Um, but I I do want to give you a chance to speak to some of the things that you you got coming. Um, well, they're already established, but um, obviously we mentioned I mentioned earlier the Seahawks Man to Man podcast w- in which you host with your partner Chris, um, and also the hype with. You, you and Chris as well. What can people expect? Obviously, I feel like the Seahawks man to man is more Seahawks related, but mm-hmm. with the hype, what can people expect when they're tuning in on Saturday mornings and listening to y'all brothers? I think that one of the things I want to establish is like almost being sports adjacent. You know, using sports as a window into other, you know, conversations. Like there, like for example, we had a very similar one. Chris and I did to kind of a little bit talked about here with that Paul Petrino example. Um, I think it was Mitch Hanniger said something to a, a radio host here. Um, I, won't, I won't say a station doesn't matter, but he like called his take. He said he has a poo poo take. He quote tweeted the guy, and if we, me and Chris used that because we didn't really need to talk about the Mariners. Neither of us are big baseball guys. We just yeah. kind of used that into a window of like you asked me, like how do you do the job with like still being respectful and professional, but being honest with your opinions. Yeah, you know, and that dude disrespected uh, wh- whatever, whoever he was talking about, mm-hmm. which is why Mitch said that. You know, and that's what me and Chris want to take. We also want to have fun, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. it's 9 a.m. Yeah. It ain't going to be that serious yeah. at 9 a.m. Like, I'm <laughs> barely up. Yeah, wake us up. Especially if I go to Thomas Street with the homie the night before or yeah, something yeah, like that, I'm yeah. definitely going to be, you know, yeah. I'm tired. But, like, we try to have fun, for one. Because mm-hmm. that's just, we try to do that on the Seahawks Man to Man podcast, too. Like, there's yeah. a time to get serious, yeah. like there was in 2020, for real, for real. Um, but, like, try to have fun. And we try to use sports as a window into other discussions, mm-hmm. you know, whether that's the discussions about life after sports or like the relationship between media and athletes. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can get in. We talk about, you know, like who's going to win the quarterback battle. Drew Smith, uh, you know, G- uh, Drew Locke, Gino Smith. Like we get into mm-hmm. the X's and O's mm-hmm. and stuff because I could talk X's and O's with the best of them. Yeah, I feel like like and mm-hmm. that's in any any media person that there is mm-hmm. in the world. I, I think so when it comes to football. Yeah. But with, with me and Chris, man, we want to have fun. And we want to we want to take the conversations you know beyond just the X's and O's you know because I think there's a we can't just talk about all the news because it's only Saturday yeah. we're not on every day yeah, so we yeah, can't yeah. just react to just what's happening yeah. that's dumb you can't react to something that happened Tuesday yeah you know, it sucks because I really wanted to talk about Marshawn owning the uh, part of the yeah you know, crack yeah, yeah. but it happened it broke on like a Monday so I was like by the time it gets yeah. to Saturday it's like yeah. we can mention it but we couldn't do a whole segment on it yeah, but sure. like so we can't do those type of things but but what we could do is use something like that to talk about like. Um, athlete ownership in general. Exactly. You know, Bobby yeah. Wagner told us he wants to own a team. Yeah. Russell Wilson owns part of the Sounders. D Wade owns part of the Jazz. LeBron yeah. owns a bunch of stuff with the Red Sox group. Like that's that's an example. Exactly. Like we can't necessarily talk about the Marshawn thing too in depth because yeah. it's old news by the time Saturday. But we can talk about athlete ownership in general. Gotcha. Or just own money athletes and money management. Yeah. Like there's so many things that I, I, so much information I've gathered that become sports adjacent topics. Not necessarily like, oh Chris, you see the game last night? Let's talk yeah. about the game. Yeah, like, yeah. well I mean, yeah, we could talk about the Mavericks beating the Jazz, but like, we ain't gonna spend thirty minutes. On yeah, that. for yeah, sure. You know, let's yeah. let's talk about. I don't even want to talk about the Jazz ever, but like, <laughs> as an example, like that's just try to bring other topics and have fun with them and be insightful yeah. and be ourselves. Yeah, you look at sports media in Seattle, especially on the radio. Actually, radio, TV, writers, everybody white, mm-hmm. and it's just yeah. it's, it's me, is Chris, is Percy Allen at the time, Mommy Masvida, Masvida who got his own website. 
uh, Jada Evans at the time. I'm trying to name all the black people in sports media. It's, it shouldn't take me this long. I think that's it. Mm-hmm. If I, uh, homie G Scott um, as well. I think G got out of uh, sports though, so it might mm-hmm. just be us. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it though. Yeah, that's it. And everybody else is a former athlete. Shout out Ray Roberts, Michael Bumpus, guys. You know Jordan Babineau, guys who work for the Seahawks mm-hmm. Radio Network. Mm-hmm. Those are all former athletes. So I yeah. put them in a different category. Like that's it. And Walter Jones, Walter former Jones, athlete yeah. as well. I think he worked. I forget who he, Fox maybe. Like that's it. So. Me and Chris want to make sure that we give something different. Yeah. Like, this is not 40-year-old dude from Enum, 40-year-old white dude from Enumclaw on your yeah. radio. Yeah. This is two 29-year-old black dudes from South Seattle. That's what you're going to get yeah. every Saturday. Yeah. Because you can't get that everywhere else. Yeah. You can mm-hmm. get everybody else's shit everywhere. Yeah. You ain't going to get everybody else's shit uh, with us. Maybe yeah. you'll like it. Maybe you won't. But you're going to get yeah. us. Nah, you know? man. And y'all got it, man. And, you know, it's well-deserved. And I yeah. think, um, yeah. you know, radio is dope, man. You, you Creative control is something that people... Beg for and ask for, mm-hmm. but when you get it, you gotta find, <laughs> you gotta utilize yeah. it, right? Yeah, so. there's politics in it too, but it's, sure. it's definitely yeah. they let us do us. We got our own like yeah. intro song yeah. and everything yeah. we do with it, saying. man. That's yeah. it. I it's mean, just us. it's a, it's like a refreshing for us to watch too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's like it's you guys' take, so we kind of feel attached to that. We're like, oh yeah, we're gonna, we, you know, it's, it's mo- most likely like a similar take. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And if it's not, you still learn something. You could have a dialogue. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's just yep. different than what else you're gonna get. Yeah, you know they didn't. I don't know why they chose us. I can't tell you why Rich Moore, the production dude over there, chose us. But mm-hmm. like, I would like to think it's because he didn't want everything he's already got from Monday through Friday. Yeah, he's got a bunch of middle aged white guys on the air, yeah. and I rock with a lot of those guys. I rock with Dick Fane, Softy, Ian Finesse, yeah. Goku. Yeah. Like, I don't have anything against those guys. Jason mm-hmm. Puckett, yeah. love Puck, yep. but yep. they're all middle aged white guys. Yeah. They have the middle aged white guy takes in backgrounds because mm-hmm. they grew up. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. mean, Chris is different. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I and think that's important. I think um, exactly. one of the first lessons I ever learned in doing radio was first and foremost is about the audience and yeah. what are you providing them? What are they getting? And I think as the producer, he, he made a great choice because he understands that everybody got a different palette and yeah. you got to mix it up. You got to get people something, you know, something different. Everybody doesn't want the same thing. So I like yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. I like that, man. Um, now, uh, man, we, we could talk with you all day, but, um, and, and I'm excited for what what's ahead. Um, but I am curious. What do you, what do you kind of what are you excited about for the future? Right when you when you when you when you look out and you and you could try to probably cast or I don't know I don't know if you're a big manifester. Or, yes. Okay. I've definitely gotten more into that. Yeah. The last okay. Like three, well, four well years. what do you what do you what do you see um, in the future? Or what are you excited about? What excites you potentially? I just really want to dominate the media space here. Mm-hmm. Like do a little bit of everything. You know, I mm-hmm. feel like there was a time, there was not as many out, uh, outlets in the time, but like I look at like 80s and 90s and stuff like that. And there was like, even early 2000s, there was just like these iconic people that like had all the interviews, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like they just, whether it's a, a Howard Stern type or like an Ahmad Rashad, I was reading about him earlier mm-hmm. today. Like I love who he is, but I was mm-hmm. just like going yeah. and his background is crazy. Like yeah. he used to play for the Vikings and do a radio show in like the 70s. Wow. Like people forget he's even an athlete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of people forget so that. associated with him being you know, uh, 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 a media member that yeah. he was mm-hmm. actually a pro athlete. Um, anyway, but like, I feel like that's kind of my goal here and not just in football. Like eventually I want to be able to do everything and yeah. be like that kind of, kind of go to person that everyone can trust. Like, I don't necessarily need to break a bunch of news, but when there's like something big, it's like, all right, we got to What's, what's Mike think? Yeah. Or like mm-hmm. Mike's yeah. got the interview with that person, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, yeah. whoever, whoever it is, you know, I think that that's, like, you see it a little bit. He doesn't do it as much anymore because the whole game is saturated. But, like, in hip-hop, you see, like, Charlemagne's kind of like that now. Like, when somebody's doing a big interview, like, let me call, let me go in the breakfast club. Let me talk to Charlamagne. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little bit of that's fading off now. But even, like, like Angie Martinez was that for a while. Yeah. You know, Hot 9, 7, or even Funk, you know. Like, Nardwar, too. Man. Yeah, Nardwar like, just, is, you know, like, his to, interviews are like, to, like, a little bit lesser extent. That's how, kind of like how DJ Academics is, sadly. Uh, but, like, I want to be a better version of that. Like, yeah, yeah. But, like, it's the, the prominence is yeah. the, and the important thing, not necessarily mimicking other people. For sure. In, in that way, you know, because um, I think locally, there's not really that, you know, G. Scott has it a little bit. Shout out to the homie G's, the homie E's. Yeah. He's put me on in a lot of ways, done a lot of good stuff for me. But uh, I think that, like, I could even carve a new lane because I write as well. Yeah. And, you know, you can throw me on the radio like G. Wills. You can yeah. throw me on TV, too. Um, you need me to host something, I can do that too. You need yeah. to come on your panel, speak to your class, you know what I'm saying? Do whatever you need to do, just like 
You know, uh, eventually, if you, I was about to teach when I was in Idaho. Mm -hmm. uh, I was to, uh, working on being an adjunct professor. Like, you need to teach a class. Yeah, yeah. I could. Just, like, everything media here so that, like, when people are coming up here, they see me yeah. and see what they can be. Yep. Yeah. You know I what I'm saying? That. Like, I'm so mad I didn't know who Percy Allen was till I was already old enough to drink. Yeah. Like, Percy had been working for the Times forever. He covered the Sonics. Mm. Like, I should have been known yeah. who he was. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it should have been easier for a person like me in high school into media to meet a Percy Allen. Yeah. Like, that's the real. fact that I couldn't, was that's disappointing. So I want to make sure anybody is, can see me. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever that's I got to yeah. do. Because I'm, I'm not feeding nothing negative to him. I'm letting him know that, hey, man, you're probably not going to make the league. You can't dunk. But you can be around this game. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? In a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of man, Stephen A making shooting guard money. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like you can, real. you can eat out here, man. Yeah, with, for sure. You know, and it'll be better on your knees long term. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's my goal. Like I can't do it the whole world. But maybe I can't. I won't say can't, but like the goal is here. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, just shake shit up at home. Yes. Yeah. Continue you know? building on that, man. Yeah, and then put everybody else on, keep paying Hell it yeah, forward. Man. You know? yeah. Well, you already got a head start, man. Yeah, pretty, man, pretty right. really good head start. Well, thank yeah. you guys for having me on here, man. This yeah. is how that works. Yes, you know what I said? Like, yes. Put yourself out there. Definitely. You know, spread man. the message. Spread something positive. Definitely, mm -hmm. man. Well, man, we appreciate you. And, you know, before we get you out of here, we always ask our guests this question. Um, so if you can, my brother, what's one word to describe what keeps you on the up and up and why? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I want to say... Belief, mm. I want to say belief, either belief or support, one of the two. I'm really big on just, like, making the people who believe in me right. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people are, like, fueled by their haters. You mm. know what I'm saying? They're doubters. You get it. Somebody does a speech, like, oh, I shout out to everybody who didn't believe in me. They shouting out some, like, sixth grade teacher who said they wouldn't make it. Yeah. It's like, I get why you want to do that, but it's like, yo, you really want a Grammy and you're giving some energy to this sixth grade teacher who shit on you? Like, that's not, she's not worth that. Yeah, she don't, I she did you. not earn that. Like, I feel you. Like, how how dare you speak on her before you speak on your producer or your mom or something yeah, like that? Mm -hmm, so for me, I'm really mm -hmm. big on people who believe in me. Mm -hmm. You know, my grandma, you know, my girlfriend Monet's in here. Like, mm -hmm. you know, my, my mom, my dad, my, my brothers, you know, Tay, Marcus, Sammy, you know, like, those guys, like, they all believe in me and they, you know, shout out to the homie Chris to uh, do all the, all the work with, like, I'm big on making those people, proving them right more than proving any haters wrong. Mm. Well, those people don't deserve my energy. Nah, yeah. If you do it for those people, you're you're never going to be happy because yeah, there's always going to be somebody mm. shitting on you. You're losing. Exactly. You're losing forward. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't want to do, like, I want to prove the people who believe in me right. Mm. Like, I feel like that's much more, that's healthier energy. Mm -hmm. And if those are the people you're doing it for, you'll really never lose sight of why you're doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, every whatever holiday, you're going to be re another reminder of all the people that believe in you mm. versus just these random ass haters and trolls on your yeah. Instagram or your Twitter and your comments on your stories or whatever it is. Those people are, you're never going to make them happy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like people hate Michael Jordan, you know, Muhammad Ali's yeah. and Serena Williams and Tiger Woods and Tom Brady's and the greats of all greats in whatever fields, right? Th there's a faction that they've never made happy, mm. but if they do it for the people that believe in them. You know what I'm saying? Then they'll, they'll be happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's really, you know, what matters. So yeah, I think belief, people believe in me. I love it, man. That's that's the that keeps yeah. me on the up and up. That's powerful, bro. For real. I'm inspired. I like that yeah, one. Man, I want everybody to embrace that, man. I took yeah. shout out to the homie KJ Ryan and him talking about that. Like, bro, who cares who passed on you in the draft, bro? Like, yeah, do it. Prove the Seahawks right. Yeah, you know, yeah. cares about proving the other 31 teams wrong. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like I don't really care that much. No, that's yeah. that's a powerful message, man. And, and I definitely feel like those listening and watching definitely can pick up on that and, and run with it for sure, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, and that yeah. don't got to be sports. I mean, anything. Definitely. With anything yeah. you want to do, man, you got to believe first. Yeah. Uh, one of my yeah. favorite lines is, yeah. is from Common. He said, nobody believes till I believe me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, that's real. So shout out to that one. That's a, that's a bit. I might be, is that the first time we got belief? Yeah. I think it might be yeah. the first time we got belief. I, I didn't want to copy nobody else's word. I know, man. Too, man. I original. Nah, nah, you, nah, man. It was a fire explanation. <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to yeah, lie. You back that up for sure, man. Man, well, uh, Mike, like, like I said, man, we, we, we support you, man, and mm -hmm. we're, we're excited to see where this journey continues to go. I know you got many more chapters to write, oh, yeah. unintended, right, hey. um, <laughs> in your story. Um, and, you know, we're, you always got support with us here at the Up and Up. Always, always. brother, man. Yeah, I'm proud of always. you guys, too, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Bro. I wear my Up and Up shirt. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Proud, long, man. Long time yeah. supporter. Yeah, 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 oh, man. come on, man. man. I know Earn from yeah. way back. Way, way, way back, <laughs> man. Earn grew up South Seattle, too, yes, man. Sir. Yeah, yes, man. Sir. Same spot. Yeah. Yes, sir, man. Yeah. Um, and, and for those listening and watching, thank you for tuning in, man. Hopefully this was a very uplifting, inspiring, and, and um, beneficial episode. It was for me. I can say that for mm -hmm. sure. 
Um, and with that said, man, I think it's safe to say, man, Mike Dugar is officially a member of the Up and Up. Can we get a round of applause? Yes, on, sir. Guys. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed that episode and that now you have a better understanding of what it means to live life on the Up and Up. To continue supporting the podcast and the entire Up and Up movement, be sure to rate, review, like, and subscribe. As well as follow us at underscore the Up and Up on all social media platforms to stay connected with everything the Up and Up has coming your way. Thanks for listening. And until the next one, keep it on the Up and Up.